Going. Going. Gun, gun. Gun, gun. Gun, gun. Don't bother. <laughs> I don't think that. Mm. What do you like that? <laughs> Having knocked down over the past 30 years most of the chimneys within range of home, Fred Dibner found himself travelling further and further afield for work. This morning, he was deep in the Yorkshire Dales. Really, I've always liked climbing up to expires. There's something magical about them. Once you get right where the point is, it feels quite nice. It's unlike a chimney because, of course, you've not got the bulk of the thing in the way. And, like, the views are quite splendid. What's it like? Oh, it's all rotten, you know. Sort of been in a long time. Well, nearly 150 years. Yeah. <laughs> It always seems such a dangerous job, you know. Do well, <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> if, if, if you make a mistake, it's half a day with the undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, <laughs> when I were a lad, you know, I used to be a joiner and the, till I was 21, before I went insane and started this job. <laughs> and the guy I worked for knew that I wanted to be a steeplejack, you see. And every time somebody fell off a chimney, he used to pin it on the back of the door. And by the time I was 21, the back of this door were full of pictures of dead steeplejacks. <laughs> but I'm still here. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> a good so thing you yeah. are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hell. <laughs> a terrible experience. But you see, 150 feet up? Yeah. Well, Johnny can beat you at that. I mean, he lives about 2,000 feet up. <laughs> hey, right at the sticks of Malin there. Hey, you got to get What do you do? Are you a farmer on top of this mountain? Yes, right? uh, yes. Well, then, then, yeah. Yeah. then woolly things. <laughs> <laughs> then woolly things, of course, they make four of us, I saw. Yeah. <laughs> Fred, this other church of mine here, uh, if you look up above the clock, oh, you'll see the louvers there. A bit of a mess. They're hanging out, almost falling yeah. out, and, you know, 500 yeah, years yeah. old, what do you reckon? Time for renewal, I Time think. for renewal? Gosh, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Five, what about the cost? Yeah. I don't know. I, I wouldn't think you're going to have much change out to say it's a 700 quid. That much? Yeah, yeah. For a few pieces Can of you... wood? Yeah, yeah. Well, the... it don't look so big from down here when you get up there. Well, they're two inches thick, and it is oak. Oh, well, I'll, I'll let them know. At the time when he's bloody mahogany front door, it's an hundred quid. Now, with, with the work getting further and further away from home, you know, find myself, like, booped into hotels, and I can remember at one time, I used to get very overawed. You know, I didn't really like hotels. The communal eating part of it were always a bit frightening, not picking the right knife and fork up and uh, being gazed upon by strange eyes. At the beginning of the, like, the euphoria and excitement of a new job far from home, uh, for sort of three quarters of the week is all right, and then you begin to miss being at home. It's a bit like being a sailor, I suppose. Uh, or you get on a ship and you disappear for six months. It's a strange life, you know, when you've been used to coming home for your tea at five o'clock every night for years and years and years. I get more and more frustrated with the fact that I can't get on with my tractor, you know. When you're working at home after tea, if you only do half an hour in the shed, it's a little bit nearer. But when you've been away all week and you come home and you're a bit reluctant to zoom off into the shed in case you get a good talking to, a bit of a shouting at off Susie, you know, you've been away all week and now you've disappeared in the bloody shed like. <laughs> and so in the course of his summer travels, Fred arrived at the Victorian refuse destructor and sewage pumping station at Cambridge. It's many years now since the chimney was in use and the station pumped its last load of sewage to the treatment plant across the city. 
but the site has been preserved and meticulously maintained by a band of volunteers. I think initially, when it were out of use and these lads first took over, they had some very unpleasant tasks in so much they'd got to dig out the well, which, of course, were full of human sewage, and it had solidified, <laughs> and they'd got to dig 40-odd foot of this stuff out of this hole. All, right, all credit to them, you know, a lot of men had to give up, but they didn't, you know, they'd done it, and it actually works. Well, they're all, like, live in a romantic world of long ago. It's like little lads who never grew up. I can't complain, cos I'm one myself. <laughs> Like, really, they're like romantics uh, trying to escape from, I think, modern life in a way. Right. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's warm in here, isn't it? Certainly <laughs> is, yes. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, engine uh, started work here in 1895. Well, yeah. uh, yeah. It pumped over two million mm. gallons. Mm the drainage of Cambridge. Yeah. Uh, this had previously gone straight into the river. Yeah. Oh, uh, This, uh... Big improvement. <laughs> this is the bit that sort of controls it all, is it? Yes, this was... Yeah. This is known as the steam man, and yeah. this is where yeah. the driver yeah. would stand. Yeah. It's a magnificently made thing, isn't it? Oh, it's you know, marvellous. The, the attention ends to... on the... on the rod. The detail, yes. Yeah. 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 It makes some lovely noises, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. The central features had a lot of time spent on it, that made it to look beautiful again. Must have looked magnificent when it were brand new, when they first uncovered it. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah look at them beautiful chimney stacks. All that carving. Magic. Our town hall's got lion's heads on like them. When we mended it, we put some marbles in for eyes, you know. Don't suppose the stone's very hard, though, not like it is in Lancashire. Although it's weathered well, and when you think it's so old, eh? Them balustrades up there look a bit fragile, don't they? A good gust of wind, doesn't it? Looks as though all horrid come down, but it must be all right, because they've been there a long time. In the 50s and 60s, the centre is the first original of a college that was there before, a college founded by Edward III, where we see the statue on the side of the horloge. On the right, the back of the couvert de l'air. Here we go, the couvert It's very nice here in Cambridge. I like it very much, you know. It strikes me as it's quite a laid back existence here being an academic sort of student. <laughs> I don't really know whether I'd like my sons to come here. It all depends on the academic ability, of course. I mean, I know men who sort of, who have brilliant brains and have thick sons. And I know some, like, intelligent sons who have thick fathers, you know, you can't, there's no way in it up, is there, really? The trouble with chimneys these days is not only that they're few, but also, as Fred approaches 60, those that are left take more climbing. Oh, I'm getting too old for this. People keep asking me that, you know, how long are you going to keep climbing up chimneys? And things like, do you still climb up chimneys, sort of thing. And I've got to do, because I've got a big mortgage, you know. <laughs> I've got to keep going. <laughs> Uh, income from the steeplejacking business has been going down over the past few years. A um, couple of reasons for this. Mm, fewer jobs around and a lot more companies. Like sometimes in the winter we've banked maybe two or three thousand pounds over the whole winter. Against the odds, Fred landed a big restoration job near home, which, tackled a few weeks at a time, would keep him in work through 1996 and beyond. This chimney is, is the biggest chimney left in Bolton. And it, it, I climbed up it when I were about 17 for a 10 bob bet in the dark. Never got the 10 bob, you know. Uh, and it's rather ironic, really, that now, in, in like the twilight years of my steeplejacking career, 
40 uh, odd years later, I'm, I've been asked to repair it. You know, it's now a listed building um, and all, and uh, supposedly has got to stay here forever. When we finished repairing the chimney stack, we've been asked by the Royal Society for the protection of budgies to put this water tank, it looks like to me, but they call it a, a peregrine falcon's nesting box. And we've got to put this up on the southwest side, about 30 feet from the top, you see. Now, peregrine falcons do not like pigeons. You know, they have like one for breakfast, one for dinner, and one for the tea. And the, the local homing pigeon society is a bit up in arms about it. And they really don't want me to put it up, you know. But I mean, me personally, I'm, I'm not over keen on pigeons because they put me in bed once for a week <laughs> with uh, some sort of disease I got off my cat that had been in a load of pigeon droppings. Not pressed too hard by paid work, Fred expanded the collection of ancient industrial tackle in his backyard workshop. It's always been a lifelong ambition of mine to actually build a wooden pit headgear and have it stuck up in the garden, you know, yeah. because quite near here there were quite a lot of collieries in olden days, but of course they've all gone now, you know. Right. So I've made this thing and I've put in for planning permission to erect it. And then hopefully at some date in the future, we'll see it sink a 500 foot mine shaft and tunnel under the river and underneath the cemetery for the coal. <laughs> Only a joke, that. Um, really, it's a garden ornament in memory of the, the miners who once lived in this area. Hello? Has mine got no oil in? Yeah, it's got oil in that, yeah. yeah. I can't see any yeah, well, pump the pump at the back and it'll come The out. centre of attention in the yard was still the old steamroller, done up years ago as an expensive hobby, but now an essential prop in Fred's public appearances. I think sometimes he struggles with the celebrity aspect of it in that, you know, if we've got something down in the diary to go off and do a public appearance somewhere when really he would quite like to be going off up a church steeple or in the garden doing something for himself. But I think he realises that, you know, that's we've got to do these things to earn ourselves enough money to keep ourselves at the winter time. It's very odd really, the celebrity <laughs> business. Like at the beginning, it were, it were quite frightening, you know, like 18, 19 years ago. I've got used to it now, and it doesn't bother me as much. And what do you do? Do you, if somebody waves to you, do you pull your face at them and, and look miserable and nasty, or do you give them a wave back? What, if you don't wave, you're a miserable bugger. If you wave, you're a big-headed bugger. What, what, you know, what can you do? You, you're stuck, aren't you? You should have a martini. Let's have a look nice and happy. The cat's not happy. The cat's not happy. No, no, well, no, it's a technical job, this painting. In recent time, Dibner and Sons have been working to revive a home industry in weathercock making. We'll lift it up. And, and sort of, I'll bring it round this way, you know, and I'll come all the way down with it. All right, then. Yep. We'll see how we go. <laughs> all right. But it was really weathercocks, well, actually, weather vanes that started my career in steeplejacking off. I'd come fresh out of the army and, and sort of set myself up as a steeplejack of sorts and never managed to get a job, you know, sort of thing, for six months, and then I was summoned to meet the Vicar of Bolton, a, a, a big tall fellow with a long black frock on. He, he was a cannon, you know, which, which I approached with a great deal of oh, fear and trepidation. And I think wow. the reason he liked me was the fact that he, he had a 1929 Umber car and I arrived on my 1927 350 AGS motorbike, you see. And, and we got on quite well. He, he had another interest in common, firearms for a vicar, a bit unusual, but nevertheless. Anyway, we, we, we got the job of regilding these weather vanes, which enabled me to go and have a do at other vicars with a lot more confidence, and ended up nearly every, up every church spire in Bolton. It's about 30 years since I last put the gold on, on these. Somebody did them in between, actually, but they didn't... Uh, do a very good job, you know. Um, 
Yeah, let's stand them up, see how uh, tall they are. Yeah. yeah. Seems a lot of That looks super. Really the ladder's nice. not it's blown beautiful. away. Yet, you know, so. the headmaster. Uh, it's nice to see you, Fred. I'll get it and we'll, yeah, we'll fix it up. It looks fun. really great, does that? It really does. I was going to say six months ago I saw the mock up. Oh, and there, now, I thought, there it thought, is. It, thought it might be a cock up. <laughs> no, no, no. No, it's all right. That's absolutely super. This really is the, the latest masterpiece in weathercock manufacturing. They, they get bigger and better every time, you know, and, and of course the price goes up. Like we've got these up to now like nearly £2,000 and putting the chimneys aside, I, I could go on making these till I'm about 95, you know. This is actually in remembrance of a gentleman who uh, I once knew and his widow's paying the bill for it, like sort of thing. Fred's most promising line of late has been the restoration of other people's steam engines. He landed a few small jobs and then a very big one. To repair this world-famed giant of the road Atlas, owned by James Hervey Bathurst. It's a Fowler B6 tractor of 16 and a half tons, built in 1928, and now worth a small fortune. Here we go, we'll put it to the test. Have a look at the bearings and see if they're getting warm. I'll buy one of these when Susie wins the pools. What do you reckon this will cost? Well, <laughs> maybe 80, 90,000 pounds, you know, something on that score. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't um, sure if you were going to actually come back. Hmm? I wasn't sure if you were actually going to come well, back. Well, I, I didn't really want to bring it back, you know. <laughs> I, I've had so much fun with it back home in Bolton, um, you know, that I got quite attached to it. Uh, but I, I, I think we've cracked the burrings, you know. There's no, there's, you know, no blue smoke coming off them and everything. Can we hear it ticking over, then? Mm. Yeah, give, give it a swing round, Bill. That was fantastic. Yeah, Thank you yeah. very much. I'm quite happy with it myself. Come and have a drink. We'll, uh, we'll play with it later. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> People used to walk away from a mm. sign saying, lovely mm. engine, pity about mm. the knocks. <laughs> yeah, this is some room, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, a bit of an headache for your decorate. <laughs> and the cleaner, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 55 foot high, yeah. it takes mm. 10 hours to heat it. Yeah. Mm, 10 degrees two, Fahrenheit. Two, two fireplaces, one on each yeah. side, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How, how much did it all cost when they built it, this place? Well, it's difficult to know. Today's yeah. prices, but nearly £600,000, mm. I think, then. <laughs> Yeah. To sell quite still, a lot of land to build it. Yeah, it's like still a lot of a lot of money in them days. Eh? Huge mm. amount. Yeah. And of is. course, mm. I think we'd rather wish they hadn't spent it sometimes. Yeah, maybe it were like half the size. You mean like <laughs> exactly. easier to maintain? And handier to maintain. Yeah. These are interesting. These are cast yeah. iron inserts. Yeah. Yeah, and the with banisters. the orc, the orc in the middle. Like. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of cast iron in the yeah. house. It's one yeah. of the first yeah. houses yeah. built with mm. cast iron beams in it. Mm. Yeah. There was a shortage of oak at the time, actually, because they were apparently making ships for the Napoleonic yeah. War. Mm. So, cast yeah. iron was all popular. Oh, some beautiful slabs of stone, isn't they? Big. I know. How do they lift them up? Oh, my word. Yeah. It's a long way up, isn't it? Certainly is. That's a bit that I repaired. Yeah. What, yourself, right? Yeah. Well, it's not a big job. You can make your put the slates on. Yeah. <laughs> Magic. Well, there you are, that's the view. Yeah, and that's all your lake, is it? It's all our lake, yeah, and yeah. on a misty and day, what we own is as far as you can see. Yeah, and yeah. the monument yeah. up there was put up wow. by the builder of the house when mm. his son was killed in the Peninsula War. Yeah, it's yeah. mine. However, did you become interested in iron monsters? <laughs> well, I, I think it was, it was in, in the blood, partly, because mm. my grandfather was um, in the Grenadier Guards on the mm. way to Omdurman. Mm -hmm. and the train broke down on the way in Egypt and he got up on the footplate and got the fire going again. Yeah. I think the Egyptians knew what they were heading for. So he yeah. got mentioned in the regimental history for yeah. that. Mm. And then he oh. drove a shunter in Southampton docks in the Great yeah. Strike. Mm. And my father was always pretty interested. Yeah, yeah. That means it's definitely in your blood, isn't it? Yeah. Without a doubt whatsoever. Yeah. Then we bought a traction engine in Ireland, yeah. which was... Yeah. We used that for thrashing for a mm -hmm. bit. And then um, I bought a Foden steam lorry, which was mm. derelict, and spent a lot of time doing that. Yeah, on. yeah. That was really good fun. I that... wasn't married then, of course. Ah, uh -huh, no. <laughs> My mother was very keen that I should get married. She thought it was time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. she used to come down weekends yeah. and help me paint it up. She thought yeah. there was no chance yeah, of getting then... married yeah. <laughs> if the engine wasn't finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I did finish it, I did get married. Yeah, yeah. Like, have you had much trouble, like, since you got Atlas with the wife? You know, That's right, it's the same as the house, you know, yeah. it was in the prospectus in a yeah, way. But, yeah, uh, yeah, I've known, I mean, a lot of people I've known have to sell engines for divorce. For, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm quite keen, I'm very keen on Atlas, I'm mm. keen to keep... Yeah, you've you know, got to keep, keep washing up and looking after the children, I, take him away from rallies. I've actually so not there too much. Yeah, I've actually started doing a bit of washing up now. Mm. I never did any before, you know, before mm. the divorce. Um, mm. Well, you're lucky because you haven't got a stately home as no, well. No, so no, you've got no, a stately home just, and several engines. Yeah, that's double trouble. You're in real, mm. you know, you've really yeah, got to watch it. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. But anyway, I mean, one of the good things is that um, <laughs> Bill Walker, who's you, yeah. know, you met today, who yeah. comes over and helps me. He's been through all that trouble. He's seen it yeah. hundreds of times. So yeah. every time we're about to go off to a rally, he turns up at the house with flowers for my wife and a box mm. of chocolates and clever. Easter eggs for the children. So he's, mm. he's got it right. Yeah, clever stuff, that. No, right? he's, um, I really must have a He's do quite that. right. Mm. No, he, he's, he does the right thing. Bunch though. of flowers goes a long way, doesn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> especially before a rally. Do you think it runs any better? Certainly does. It's a, it's a hell of a lot quieter 
Yeah. Apart from the gears. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's another shame job. about that. That's another yeah, job. But yeah. there was no knots. Yeah. Nothing ran hot. Yeah. And um, I think we got here in record time. That, we, got, we did get here in record time, compared yeah. with three years ago, didn't yeah. we? We ended up at half past eleven on that bridge over there. Yeah. We also didn't stop at a pub this time. Either. No, we didn't stop at any pubs, did we? We, we brought our own. Right. who fell off. He, he fell about 60 feet and landed on a load of planks across uh, a valley on, on the top of a building, you know, in between two roofs, like. And, of course, really, the plank saved his life, you know. I mean, they broke it must have broke his fall, even though it rearranged his bone structure. The, the thing is that I found out about this because I rang him one evening to invite him to a chimney felling operation. <clears throat> and his little, little lass come on and said... I said, is your dad in, you know? She said, no, he fell off a chimney. <laughs> and, and you shouldn't laugh, really. And, and then Mum come on and said, oh, he's in Thameside Hospital. You can go and see him if you want. And me and Sue went round, having, and he were all thrust up, like you see in these Ealing studio comedies, you know? <laughs> all wires and strings. And he said, I'm all right till I laugh, and then it feels like somebody's hit me in the chest with a sledgehammer. <laughs> You know, anyway, he's all right now, and he's back steeplejacking again, you know, he's walking about <laughs> in the land of the living. He went to art school. When he was about 17, you'd think he'd work in office, not doing what he does now. doing for a fortnight, I get all grumpy, you know, I get thinking, like, I'm bloody dying, nobody wants me no more, <laughs> like, got to go and have a climb up something, you see. If I can carry on till, you know, I'm an old fella, like, uh, you know, I don't know, I suppose uh, I'm slow down a bit before I'm 70, but... The ideal way out would be, I think, uh, instead of dying in bed of uh, lung cancer or something horrible like that, uh, just drop off one one sunny day when I'm about 75, you know. <laughs> and that'll be the end. <laughs> 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 